So here I am about to embark on something brand new for this channel and for myself, and that's resin 3D printing. But before I even start my first print, what other things did I need to buy to get going with resin? That's what I'm covering right here today on Curzy Fabrications. Let's go. So unlike filament-based 3D printing, resin-based printing requires a few more things to get going correctly and safely. And so that's basically what I have here on the table, the things that I have on hand to get going. So first of all, we're gonna start with a few resins that I purchased. Now resins are gonna come in a lot of different types. Now you're going to have different sizes. You can usually get these in the full kilogram the half kilogram, sometimes they will come in milliliter size, like a 500 milliliter bottle. And then you have things like low odor, eco resin, on top of all of the different colors you're going to have available. So for my testing and for my first printer, I decided I wanted kind of a sample pack to get going. So that's what I have here on the table. First of all, I bought this full one kilogram, basically comes in like an oil bottle, something you'd find in the automotive section but this is transparent resin. It cures at the UV wavelength of 405 nanometers, which is gonna be the same for all these resins and all of these LCD-based printers. This is a pretty generic resin as far as resins go. There's no eco, there's no low odor. I haven't opened this up myself to see how it smells or looks, so we're gonna to have to take a look at that on the first printer. I also grabbed the eSun bio-based resin. I was hoping for possibly a low odor, something that's a little bit safer, something that wouldn't be quite as hazardous as other ones. And this came in the half kilogram size in one of these nice metal bottles. Next up, I got some SaneSmart Rapid UV Printer Resin. This says that each layer cures in six seconds. And again, this is a one half kilogram container in one of these nice aluminum bottles. And finally, I picked up some of the Eco UV resin in a translucent green. Comes in a 500 milliliter bottle. And again, this one is from Anycubic. So got a sampling here. Prices range on these from $45 for the Ziltec because it is a one kilogram size. The eSun is a $29.99 bottle for half a kilogram. The Sane Smart Rapid Cure is $25 for a half a kilogram. <laughs> And the Anycubic, a little bit higher than the rest, Eco UV Resin, $33.99 for 500 milliliters. So now let's move on to some of the safety cleanup sort of items that you're going to need. First of all, if you plan on saving your resin and you're not just going to keep it in the vat like between prints, you're going to need a way to put that resin back in the bottles. And in order to do that, you're going to need to filter it for anything that may have ended up in your liquid resin. So what I've got here is a paint filtering kit that comes with a nice funnel and then comes with a bunch of these paint filters which have a nice mesh in the bottom that will do the filtering for your resin. This is an excellent way to filter your resin, make sure you get out all those little pieces of cured resin. And in fact, I know a lot of printers are actually coming with the filters but they don't have the funnel and you're gonna run out of these pretty quick with what comes with the printer. Next up, after you're done with your print, you're going to have to clean that print before you can do anything else with it. So I have these pickle containers. I wanted something that was big enough for most of the prints that I'm going to pull off of the smaller resin-based printers, the type of printers that I'm going to be starting with. This is a 1.4 liter, one and a half quart, 47 ounce container. And I've got two of them, one for my IPA or whichever cleaning solution you're going to go with. Check out Uncle Jesse's video. He's done a lot of reviews on cleaning solutions that you can use. I'm going to use IPA to begin with. So one of the containers is for that IPA. The other container is just for water to do the rinsing. So again, IPA is what I'm going to be starting with. These are a little bit difficult to find these days. I know some drugstores are still carrying them, but if you have too big of a problem finding it, again, check out Uncle Jesse's video for alternatives. Let's talk about prices for these. The paint strainer kit with the funnel is only $13 from Amazon. The pickle containers are about $14 a piece from Amazon. 
And if you can find IPA, this two pack, which I bought at a Sam's Club here in the United States, was only $4 for 64 ounces total. Next up, you're going to, of course, have to protect yourself and your work surfaces. So let's talk about that. First of all, you're going to need a lot of nitrile gloves. These are your standard disposable gloves that you can get at all kinds of hardware stores. You can order them online if you can find them these days. Uh, I found these at Home Depot here in the States. I recommend getting at least the six mil if you can find them. They're a little bit sturdier and they're gonna range you anywhere from about $6 to $8 for a 40 pack. Again, depending on kind of the quality of the gloves that you pick out. If you're going to be working in an enclosed area, meaning you don't have good ventilation, if you're worried about the fumes, you're going to need some sort of respirator just to protect yourself from what you might be getting off of the resins. Again, these will not be necessary if you're working in a well-ventilated area. There shouldn't be enough harmful fumes to really bother you. But if you don't like the smell, if you just want to have the extra protection, grab some of these. This is a terrific respirator. You can find this. This is made by 3M. You can find, again, most hardware stores under normal conditions. If the uh, pandemic here has not stopped you from being able to pick these up, these run about $30 and they have nice replaceable filters for when you've worn these out. And to protect your work surface, we also have a nice silicone mat. Now these mats come in all different shapes and sizes. This one I have here was about the largest one I could find. I've got this big desk here. I wanted to cover a large area. This one's big enough to hopefully fit my printer on one side because it's a small printer and then have a work area next to it. This mat ran me about $15 again on Amazon. It was not a big purchase. Again, you can find these from all sorts of retailers. They come in different thicknesses. Some of them have lips on the side to prevent overflow, that kind of thing. So definitely recommend these for any work surface that you're going to be working on. It's going to really help in cleanup if you make a mess, and it will also help you from staining anything like one of these nice wood countertops. And finally, when your print comes out, after you've done all of the cleaning, you're going to have to do some post curing on the printing. Now the cheapest way to do that is to take your nice new print, stick it outside in the sunlight and let the sun do its job for hopefully not too long or you may burn up that new UV print. But as most of us like to work indoors, have a nice work process, you're probably going to want some sort of UV curing station in your workspace. Now, if you don't want to build it yourself, if you're not really a do-it-yourselfer when it comes to building a nice resin curing station, I understand. And the easiest solution for both the cleaning and the curing in one kit is the all-in-one AnyCubic wash and curing station. I haven't reviewed it myself. I don't actually have one, but I know a lot of my friends here on YouTube have reviewed it and I will include a link in the description to some of those reviews if you have any questions about how that works and how well it works. That is about a $210 purchase as of filming, uh, and that takes care of the cleaning, it takes care of the curing. Uh, it's somewhat automated, particularly in the timing and the agitating of the parts, and it may just save you a lot of hassle in the long run. But I saw a terrific video here on YouTube from Tested.com, where they took a nice bread box, turned it into a curing station. And what was really funny to me about this is that I actually already had this bread box in my home and we were getting rid of it because it was taking up too much room on the counter. So, got a nice bread box here. I'm going to turn into a curing station. I have the drying racks come in a two pack here. I'm going to put one of them in the curing station to set the prints on while they're curing. I'm going to have one outside of the curing station for drying. And then you're going to need to buy some UV lights to add to this, as well as a small timer so that it cuts off those lights automatically so that you don't forget about it or leave them too long in there and burn up a component. Now to build your own, you're going to end up spending less than $100 on the components. The bread box is about $30. The UV lights are about $19. The drying racks, which you're going to need anyway because they're terrific to set your parts on while they're drying, they're about $13. And an inexpensive electric timer is going to be about $12. Put all that together, you're going to have a nice curing station. 
Again, as always, you're going to have links up here in the description to that tested.com video. I'm not going to recreate their video because they did a terrific job and you can see how to put all that together in a curing station. So that's about it for me. I think I've covered all of the components that I'm going to need to start with resin printing. Again, I'm new to this. I gathered all this information from watching my friends here on YouTube that have a lot more experience than I do. But I wanted to cover this on my channel because, again, I'm about to embark on this journey. And this way you guys can see what I've purchased. Please comment in the description if I've missed anything, if I've ordered the wrong thing, if you've tried any of these resins and have any opinions. Again, I always take your feedback and I appreciate you taking the time to leave it. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like and be sure to subscribe if you're new here and would like to see my upcoming resin content. Don't worry guys, resin's adding to the stuff I'm doing here. I'm still gonna be covering my Ender 5 content as always. I'm gonna have new project content coming and I'm gonna be bringing back some old favorites that I didn't quite finish. So thanks for watching. I'm Chris, this has been Curzy Fabrications. I'll see you real soon.